Yani satan yiyor. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Lovely. Well, welcome to this talk. When um, Ian first approached me about doing it, I sat there and thought, what on earth can I talk to a, a room full of daily experts about for what I thought was going to be about 20 minutes, but it's actually an hour. So it's kept me awake for a few nights. But I think what I'd like to do to start off with is explain what I do. I know some of you know me, a fair number of you know me, but I, my, my convoluted title at the RHS is Partnership Coordinator. And what my role is, is working with all the plant societies to help them put on shows, um, work through issues, acting as a conduit to other parts of the RHS. Most of the society members, if they've got a question, who do I contact, how do I do this, what's the rule on this, they'll come and find me and I'll put them in touch with the right people. But the majority of my work is working with plant societies on shows and working with plant societies to help solve all the problems they have, which are ones that you've been talking about this morning. How do you increase membership? How do you convert your Facebook membership to actual members? Once they become members, how do you get them involved? How do you get them to come and help for five minutes at a show? It's always a good one. Um, how do you get them to start showing if there's a competitive element, say, with, with your area? And how do you put succession planning in place? You know, all the people, all the lovely people I work with at the NDS are the same ones I started with almost 10 years ago, and they're the same ones my predecessor worked with 12, 13, 14 years ago. Um, they're not going to want to do it forever, and you need to get people in place to come up and fill in those roles, which is one of the hardest issues that we've had to deal with. Um, so one of the things I do is run workshops with plant societies, um, just looking at these problems. We've had one workshop a year over the last eight and a half years since I started with the RHS, and we've looked at everything from how can plant societies use social media, how do we deal with some of the issues we've spoken about, um, what do plant societies, how they're going to function and work in the future. Because as we sort of kind of touched on this morning, 25, 30 years ago, somebody joined a plant society to find out how to grow the plant. Now they can just Google it, so that's no point offering that as a benefit. So it's looking at how societies can offer something to their members, which makes them go, oh, yes, I can't get that anywhere else. Um, I'll go and join the society. And I've always said to them, you, use me as an example. I'm a really keen gardener. Um, I'm perfectly capable of gooding, I'm a perfectly competent gardener. What's going to make me join your society? And it is things like having gardens open or plant shows and shares and swaps available that I couldn't get to without being a member because every gardener loves to get the new, the new plant out, get, you know, get hold of the seeds that they haven't got yet, that sort of thing. Um, and it's being more imaginative and inventive with what you can offer members. And we've actually got um, a couple of workshops coming up a bit later in the year, which those of you on my contact list will get the, the information about, where we're going to be discussing this sort of thing and sharing ideas. One of the things that's been really useful in the last seven or eight years is plant society sharing what they do. Because somebody will come up with a little nugget of an idea, we just tried this. Um, and other people try it slightly differently and it works, you come back and you share it. And it's not going to cure all these problems overnight, but it really will slowly, with most societies, I would say 90% of societies are willing to take some of these ideas on board and try them, even if they don't work for them for whatever reason. But we'll find slowly and surely you might get more members, you might get a couple of members from an event that are ones that are going to come on board and help you on your committee, help you run shows, that sort of thing. And it is a slow trickle. So that's kind of a key part of what I do. The other side, as I said, is shows. If we look at some of the NDS shows that we've had um, recently, um, I, I work at Wisley. I work within the Horticultural Relationship Department, which sounds very grand, but it's, it's all the people that work with um, organisations external to the RHS. So we've got Partner Gardens. For those of you that are RHS members, you might know the Partner Gardens scheme that there's about 250 around the country you can visit. It's affiliated societies. So one of the things I was going to mention, because I know a couple of the smaller um, local groups are here, is anybody knowingly a member, of their, uh, is their, their daily a local group um, affiliated to the RHS, do you know? You are, a couple there. So um, if you are a member of a local group and you're not affiliated to the RHS, it is worth thinking about. Um, there's quite a few benefits. I will read them off to you so I don't forget any. One of the things you get is, is um, contact with the affiliated team who offer you 
They can offer you advice on where to go, what to do. You'll go on a an RH on the RHS website. You'll go on a map which pinpoints all the horticultural-based societies that are registered with us. And if somebody moves to an area or wants to find a group, so dahlias, general horticulture, they can go onto this map and say, oh yes, that's within my area. They might find you that way. They wouldn't otherwise. One of the really nice benefits, if you are, if your group is affiliated with the RHS, is you get a yearly visit for up to 55 people for free to one of the five RHS gardens. And you also get um, a complimentary RHS pass, which allows up to two people at a time free entry into any of, the, any of the five gardens. And that can be used as often as you like. It's just for two people at a time. So that's something that you can share around. Um, if somebody's going on holiday to, to Devon, they could go to Rosemore, that sort of thing. Um, your second visit to an RHS garden is half price. So you get first one free for 55 people, then you get one half price. Um, you get a copy of the garden magazine sent to a named representative of your society. So for, I think it's £45 a year at the moment, so you get quite a lot for that, so it's worth thinking about. If um, You can find the information on the website. If you can't find it, get in touch with me. All, all the NGS members have got my email address, and I can point you in the right direction. But it's something that's really worth thinking about for your societies. You also get um, a Banksian medal once a year for your shows that you can award to somebody which is, uh, say, another touch, so that's, that's um, I think, with, with, for the money, it's definitely worth looking at if you're, you're interested. So I'm very happy to talk to you about it a bit later on if you're interested in, in following that up. The other, the other people I work with on my team are the trials team, so uh, we've got all the trials that happen at Wisley and other parts of the RHS, so all the trials um, officers work within my department, so I work quite closely with them um, on some of the events. Um, we've got the Head of Horticulture Relations, that sort of thing. Um, so it's all to do with horticulture and relationships, how we can take the message of the RHS out further, but also how we can help those organisations that are horticultural organisations. Um, so as you can imagine, it's quite, quite a lot of content. So, as I said, I sat there thinking, what can I talk to you all about? Um, I love dahlias, but I'll never be able to grow them, I don't think, to the standard that, that most of you grow them to. So. Work. Yes, there we go. So just to give you a little bit of history of why why I might be here, apart from being an RHS member, it's all I also love dahlias. So me and dahlias. Um, in 2015, just before I started with the RHS and met all the, the, the lovely members of the NDS, I was a little mm, dahlias, I'm not really sure I like them. I'd only come in, don't shoot me down for this, it gets better. Um, I'd come into the job and I'd only come into contact with um, dahlias at shows, that sort of thing. Um, I think in the days before it was much more user friendly for want of a better word and also I'd never come into contact with dahlias as a gardener because my dad is actually very allergic to them so he'd never grown them so it wasn't something I'd really really sort of um, known much about until I started and then me in 2015 just after I'd worked for the NDS with the NDS on their first show it was sort of oh actually I quite like some of these I might have to look into it and then me now as it is with a lot of people. Yes, well, can I have a bit more room? I've only ordered 70 varieties this year. I'm sure I can fit a few more in. And I know you all know the thing, especially with, with some new beginners, they get very keen and want to order every variety going. So in the space of sort of eight years, I've not really known much about dahlias to being a bit of an addict. And I think that's probably something that will last for the rest of my life. <laughs> so... The NDS dailies and the RHS, I've touched on what we do with um, plant societies in general. Um, and of all the plant societies I work with, and we've got about 40, 45 in total that we have contact with, the NDS is probably the one of the ones that we do the most with, because as I say, we host the national show in Wisley, we hold other events and shows, and you come to the June Plant Society show um, and events like that. So, um, in a nutshell, so, so we've got dahlias that grow in the garden. Um, we've got scheduled trials, which I'll come on to later. Um, we've got the, the NDS National Show, which again, we'll look at some, some information about that later. Um, we provide the opportunity for the NDS to raise funds. You can sell plants at um, the, the, the June Show. Um, you also sell plants at the Wizard Flower Show, and um, you get involved in other events, which bring you into contact with the public. Um, and we encourage visitors to get involved in showing dahlias. For those of you that have been to the Wisley Show at the weekend, we hold the visitors' um, competition. I'll show you that a bit more about that later. But it's just that first step of saying, spring along a day here and show it. We'll stage it for you. 
um, and it's it's kind of getting them into the showing bug, hopefully. I know we've had some people that have gone on from winning in that class to actually going on and showing in the, in the Wisley schedule. Um, we featured donors in various publications, which we'll have a look at in more detail. Um, we've got a very nice Tiberian collection, which needs to grow, and again, I'll speak to you about that, about how you can actually get involved in that. Um, we've got some really interesting um, historical and current daily information in the library. Um, and so, as so was mentioned this morning, we, hold, we provide a space to hold judging events and training, that sort of thing. So, um, we'll come on to that a bit more. So, first of all, the NDS National Show. Has anybody here never been to it? Hoping there's not many hands. No, you've all been to that. So, you've seen, you've se you know what the marquee looks like, you've seen it, you've seen how it's staged. Um, so this is the um, people's competition at the NDS show. The lady in the middle um, being presented her first prize certificate by Rhonda, um, Brenda and Cyril. She has come along for that for the last three or four years. She's now keen to get involved a bit more. Um, one of the prizes we give if you win first prize in this competition is a year's membership to the NDS. Um, I don't know the stats, Jim probably help out on that, but whether they, they carry on with that, I think some of them probably do. But she's now somebody who wants to come along to the weekend show and get more involved, show her day, show her dailies off, she talk to people about how she grows them as a, a sort of novice and a beginner. So it's that sort of person that is, is really useful to attract. Um, okay. um, and again, I say we hold the space for judging. So here's last year, so then I think there were five, five people taking the, the exam last year. Cyril giving their, their entrance exams. Um, and this is um, in one of the, the meeting rooms of Wisley, so it's easy to set up the space. You can see the data is in the foreground, we take them all up from the show, we, we keep some of the best ones and we use those for the actual competition. Um, I know that the message I think has gone out to if anybody's interested in taking the judging exams this year to get in touch, because we're doing the same again on the Wednesday this year. So. Um, here's the crew, I think you recognise probably some of these faces. This is at the very end of the Sunday after eight days of, well, more than eight days of, of running the show. Um, I was thinking we could have a caption, caption competition this one day, but we'll save that for a special occasion. But one of the things I would say, if you've never gone down and actually helped out at the show, I know some people haven't got the time, but if you go down, if you can spare a day, half a day to help out on the bureau, it's really good fun. It's hard work, but it's fun, and it's worth saying, I'll come and help for a day. I know some people are probably too far away and it won't help. But I say, if you can volunteer to take part in this, it was, it's great for you to see from everybody. So that's kind of the back of, back of the hall, those we haven't seen it, um, leading into the, the exhibitor's tent. So, some of the information that we hold on or put out for daily is in RHS publications. So, oops, wrong way, let's go back one. Okay. So, on the left hand side here, you can see we have a we have a publication that goes out um, in December with the Plant Finder, for those of you that are aware of that magazine, which is sort of this really specialist um, alternative to the garden, for want of a better description. And again, you have a page in here which tells you all about the NDS, big shows you've got on, how to join, who to contact, um, and what you can do. And every plant society has a page um, in this magazine about this. Um, before lockdown, see here, we were running in the Garden Magazine um, a series of articles, why I joined my plant society. So somebody would talk about why they joined their plant society, what benefits they got, what they do to help. And again, we ran a, we ran a daily one, I think it was probably about September 2018, 2019, so that went out. Um, and then this bit here, in the Garden Magazine last late summer, there was a five or six page spread which went out, and I think um, on the NDS Facebook page, if you um, are on that, I posted a copy of this, so it's available to look at in full. But it was all about um, seven or eight different experts, their favourite data is why they grow them, what they do, where they show, that sort of thing. So that was really quite a nice, interesting read, and say so John was in there as part of that. <laughs> so the daily trials at Wisley has has who how. Who's seen the Dragon Trials at Wisley this year and last year? Quite a lot of people, hopefully. Um, if you get to Wisley in sort of August, September, October, they're really worth seeing. Um, the trials this year um, and last year were 
Mostly garden variety dahlias. There were some that get shown on the show benches, some of the Jasuji um, varieties. Um, and it's really um, aiming to look at these varieties and see if they're worthy of an AGM. Okay. And for those of you that aren't really aware of what an AGM is, it's a water garden merit and it's there's a couple of um, factors that need to be considered. It's got to be a, a plant that's widely available, relatively dis disease resistant, um, fairly easy to propagate because we're looking at, for an AGM, um, a gardener coming into a garden centre will see the certificate and see actually, you know, that's worth, that's worth doing. Um, and also looking at, I mean, we haven't trialled dailies at Wisley for a while now, and I know it's something we always used to have on, and it's, it's, um, it is a shame that we don't have so much space now. But it's looking at um, newer varieties that possibly weren't around when we were trialling them sort of 10 years ago. So this is just a picture of the trials field at Wisley. Um, so looking at the details of the daily trials, for those of you that haven't seen them, why do we run the trials? So, um, as you can see, we run them for more than 30 different plant groups every year, um, looking for plants that perform exceptionally well so that we can go to, to visitors' publics and, and the little AGM sticker will go out to garden centres. They put them in plants that have got an AGM or to say, you know, you can trust this plant, it's going to grow well for you, hopefully. Um, and the purpose of the daily trial, um, if you want, I won't read it out to you, I'm sure you can see that there. But it's, it's I think that the, we realise that Dahlia's have become a very fashionable thing again. Um, and it's wanting to give that AGM award to people so they can actually say, well, if I grow this Dahlia, I know it's going to perform well. It's going to sort of survive the vagaries of the English weather to a certain extent, more than some, some of the others. And it's fairly easy to look after. So again, the age of the trial was to assess the cultivars um, being produced by current breeding programmes. And I think um, the one the trials at the moment were for relatively, not very new, but newer varieties that are sort of what we would probably call garden, the unclassified ones. And I'll show you in a minute there's a list of the ones that we looked at. Um, but it's really um, to allow us to classify and register, if we, if we need to, any, any new varieties. I'll give you a couple of seconds to read that. So the judging criteria for a trial, um, I say they're judged on their, for the day is they were judged on their ability to flower, would they come into flower early, the tractor foliage, good quality blooms on the strong stems, um, with strong vigour of relatively good disease resistance. So that was what we were looking for in the trials. So this is most of the varieties that we trialled. I won't read them all out to you, I'll give you a chance to just run your eyes down the list. In there. But as you can see, there's a couple in there that actually go on, on the, the, the just see the ones here that go on the show bench, there's a couple of others. But on the whole, they are garden and non-classified within the show varieties. A chance to look at that. Um, we ran at the flower show last year, we picked out the ten that were performing best of all possible AGMs. And for those of you that were at Wisdom last year, you'd see we have the, the bench with the people, the visitors were able to choose their favourites because the trials team obviously also wanted to gauge, you know, we know which ones are performing well, which ones did the public like. Um, the ones that did really well for the public were both the creme de Cassie, Cassie's and Cognac, but the one that won hands down, sorry David, I know you don't like this one, was Blackjack. <laughs> um, it was by, by far and beyond the most popular dahlia there. I think it's probably the colour. Um, and it's quite a nice form for growers, but they're, they're the ones that we were, were trying. Okay. And these are all the dailies that were actually awarded an AGM and the Ward of Garden Merit as a result of those trials. So you can see which which ones performed well. I don't know, they've got to be white to play early. <laughs> that one might not have been that early. <laughs> but these dailies in an AGM, and in a set amount of years' time, at some point, 
um, they could be revisited probably as we, we're probably talking 10 years down the line, but whether they're still worthy, whether something else has taken its place, there's a better data that looks much the same. But they are the ones that were awarded tri um, an AGM this, this time around. So some of the interesting that came out of that is that I mentioned um, Blackjack just now. When we are trialing and recording the information, there's a lot of behind the scenes activity that look at the, the, the botanical information. On days, is it registered? Are we, are we trialing the right varieties? And something quite interesting that came out was that Blackjack um, is actually registered as another day here um, with, with the um, registrar, um, but it looks very different to that. So what they're looking at the moment is has something got muddled up? Has it slowly over the years? And has it been raised with another name? Has it just changed over the years? So there's still work going on to that. And although it was awarded in AGM, it won't be officially registered and, and put in place until they've worked out what's gone on with that particular data. There was one other that the same thing um, happened with. Um, and once they've worked it out, they'll, they'll <coughs> look for somebody who could willing, willing to, who's willing to register it and help them through the process. But it was one of those sort of vagaries that came up, um, and that's that's. One of the benefits is the trial that we check that everything is registered properly. Is it registered under the right name, ownership, if that's a, if that's a, a relevant issue? Do you take cut things with it? Say that again? Do you take cut things off from the portfolio? No, we get, we get um, from the suppliers, it's, it tends to be Dave Paul's big supplier of the daily for the trials, and there's, there's other um, British suppliers that get some from abroad. Um, they get them in as tubers um, and grow the tubers on. When they're between year one and year two, they will try and take some cuttings, I think, if necessary. Robbie can probably have a little bit more on this well, than the detail. Well, because some of the 80s, we revert back to yeah. what it was made from. That's what you yeah. No, I, th I think they're, they're looking at the, the DNA of it and that sort of thing to try and work out what, you know, what, why we've got one registered when this one wasn't registered and what, what's the difference between the two. Um, that's just one of the little interesting things that comes out of the trial process. So 2023 and 24, we're still doing another two years of trials for the dailies at Wisley. And these are four varieties, I think, that have only been widely available for the last three or four years. So it's newer varieties um, <coughs> on the market. I know they're going to be sourcing some abroad to see all the difference and uh, what, what varieties are available from the States, um, from sort of some of the conversations I've overheard. So again, the, the tri size of the trial would say would be brand new varieties, so it would be really interesting to see what comes out of these. And again. Um, the trials lady in charge of that is contacting the suppliers at the moment for the tubers that we get in and from that they work out how many they've got the space because they'll trial three of each variety at a time um, just to see if there's any difference, you know, if you've got a diseased one for some reason, two of them grow brilliantly, one of them doesn't, why, um, and the way, why am I far behind that? So um, hopefully next year, the year after, we'll be able to give you some more information about which ones have come out. So another show that we held last year, and I know so, so Andrew was a speaker at this, and some of the other ADS members were speaker at this, was Discovering Dahlias. And this was a show at the end of September aimed at encouraging visitors who love dahlias but don't necessarily want to show them just how to grow them better and how to get involved with the ADS. We have membership there as well. Um, so as you can see at the back, as Andrew giving his talk on how to, how to grow a tuber from a plant, from a garden centre, I think was one of the key things. So it's making sure that if people get cuttings from David Hall, if they get a tuber from a garden centre, if a friend gives them it in a pot, how do they look after that dahlia so it's successful, so that they don't get discouraged and think, oh, I can't grow dahlias, I'm not going to bother anymore. So there was a lot of that in the show. We had people talking about how to flower arrange with them. Um, if you've only got a couple of dahlias and some other bits in your garden, how do you make a nice a bouquet out of that. I know Tracy gave a talk about her living with dahlias in her garden and how she likes to have a nice glass of wine with her dahlias. So that went that went down very well that talk. Um, we had Liz Appleby who's not here giving a talk about how she started her starting up her, her, her garden dahlia farming, that sort of thing. Um, we had lots of help benches around the outside, you know, how do I do with slugs, how do I do this, how do I do that? But the aim of the actual speakers and the, the visual impact of the show is to make people realise there really is a daily for everybody and actually they're not that difficult to grow if you, if you follow some basic rules. Um, that was at the end of September. It's something, as I think was mentioned this morning, that we're 
course, if you go to the, doing biannually to tie in with the second or third years, so the second year of the, the new lot of trials, um, resource-wise, it's not something at the moment that we can do every year, but it was really popular, and I hope we will repeat it at some point in the next couple of years. They were all the people that we had involved in this. So we had, you know, people, I don't know if how many of you know Georgie Newbury, who's a flower farmer from Somerset. We had um, some of the trials the team, Andrew, I mentioned Tracy. Um, Olivia Cryer at the bottom, um, she was a lady we found on Instagram who has a little flower farm specialising in dahlias down in Guildford. Um, and we got in touch with her and said, are you interested in coming along and just doing a stand at the show? And she, was, she said, I'd love to, I'm terrified, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, she came along. Um, she had a trestle table and a little stand. She just had probably 30 or 40 flowers on it, but she spent all day talking to people about how to grow the dahlias, what she does with them, the varieties, where to source them, that sort of thing. So again, it's the type of thing that's really getting the visitors interested and pulled in um, and starting, if they didn't already have it, starting that interest in growing dahlias. Um, hopefully she'll be, about, she'll be coming to the, the um, weekend show in September and doing the same thing. So that's just some more pictures from Discovery Daily so you can sort of see the variety. Um, we had a couple of people in the front row of the audience there who basically camped out the whole day, um, claimed their chairs with a coat and then just ran out to get a cup of coffee every now and then, um, busily taking notes on, on all the talks. So um, it really was engaging for the audience. And we had, I think we got some members for you from this, um, but also um, people went away really enthused to try and grow things. <coughs> Okay, so one of the other things I mentioned, has anybody ever been to the herbarium at Wisley, particularly the new one? Not many, no, no. Um, before they started all the works at Wisley, the herbarium was um, down in the old lab building, for those of you that know it. It wasn't climate controlled, it had bugs, the, 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 it, was, it was a very unsuitable um, place for um, a national herbarium collection. Since we've got the new building at Wisley up at Hilltop, we've got a, a proper climate controlled herbarium, which as you can see holds some dahlia specimens. Um, considering the number of dahlias there are available, it's not that many dahlias that we hold. Um, and that's some there, their varieties that they do hold. But what they're looking for, and these these are the, the new the new shelves within this climate controlled area and I think um, the NDS sponsored some of these boxes going back sort of four or five years when we were building the site. So you've actually got probably five or six boxes that are daily boxes that are sponsored by the NDS which was really nice. Um, but what we're looking for is more dahlias for the bearing. So if anybody's interested, um, and I think the lady that runs it is probably going to come to Wizzy Flower Show to get an idea of what's out there to press. Um, but if anybody um, is, has a large collection of cultivars, or just some that you think it would be useful to be in the herbarium, um, please do get in contact on this email address, herbariumrhs.org.uk, and just talk to them, and they can advise you whether what you've got is, is um, suitable. But they would like to build up, eventually, a collection of all the dailies that are available in the UK. So that's a, a lot of dailies and a lot of pressing. Um, but they're very keen to talk to the NGS members um, and get that collection growing. So if you'd like to do that, please get in touch with us. Um, now the library is another really good resource for daily material. If anybody's doing um, a talk or a presentation or they're just interested in the history, it's a really interesting um, opportunity. They've got online, we have, um, these, are, these are both sort of online um, presentations that you can go to by the website on the dahlia. Um, if you just go through to, if you just Google, if you just query dahlias in the RHS website, these will come up. But there's, there's um, and the links here, and I'll, I'll send this out afterwards, you can send this to everybody if they're interested in it, the links are on there. But it's just some really interesting history of the dahlia, how it, how it came to the UK, how it came to Europe, um, collections of the past, and it's worth, if you say, a, a wet Saturday afternoon, it's just worth a browse through to look at what's on there. Um, and there's art collections, some really, some really great art prints. And again, 
if you're interested in using one of these for a, for a presentation or a book, you just have to say it's okay to use it. And you'll, you'll, in most cases, you'll get permission to, to reprint that. Um, and the other thing that might be of interest to you is they've got some really good old catalogues, which, which are quite fun and interesting to look at with some of the information. If at any point um, one of the locals, one of the daily societies, or, or as, a, as a day out, you wanted to look at some of this in more detail, what you can do is get in touch with the library and say, we're coming up, could we have a day in your reading room, or half a day in your reading room? And they will actually lay out some of this interesting stuff for you if you tell them what you need. And it is fascinating to go through the catalogues. Um, there's a couple here, so I don't know if anybody, you recognise any of these, these things. But there's some really old plant catalogues, um, order catalogues from here, probably some of these that don't exist anymore. Um, it's often interesting to see the prices. You can get 17 dailies for 4.99, including P and P, which certainly doesn't happen anymore. Um, but you can look through. You can actually pick the catalogues up, look through them if they're of interest to you for, for historical reasons, and just just a, a bit of fun, really. I'll give you a couple of a couple of minutes to look at that and read it. And then some more old catalogues, they've got old, some old pictures, um, historically linked into dailies. Um, so if you're interested in doing any research, it's certainly worth getting hold of. Right. So this is from an old catalogue from about 1980 something, I think. So it sort of shows you the variety on there. And I think all these five varieties are available. And I think I wrote down that this was the one that was available for 4 99 including carriage. So um, those were the days. So I've got a little bit of a... Okay. Again, from the 1980s. Can anybody name me any of these varieties? So we've been looking at... I don't know whether there's ones that you're still aware of or... And correct me if, I, if, if it's got them wrong, if I can just point out. So this pink one, does anybody have any idea what that might be listed as? Any answers? It's down as Monk Mark. Yeah. It's not one I've heard of, but I'm sure some of you have probably yeah, heard of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, need, I need glasses on and glasses off for this because I can't see both at the same time. So number two, this one here. Where is the lady? So number two, any offers for that one? It is, yes, yeah, Frank Hornsey. Um, number three, this one here. Bottom left, sort of pinky, pinky one. Any offers for that one? No, sorry, it's Wharton, Wharton Blue Streak. Sorry? Wharton Blue Streak. So that's what it's listed as in this catalogue, anyway. Yeah, so, and again, I'll go through the others. We've got, we've got um, Bidden and Peach is the number four up in the corner there. Um, we've got Alvis Doris is number five, which is that one there. Yeah. Yeah. Number six, um, Margaret Ann, down yeah. there. Margaret Ann, did you say? That one there, yes. Yes, yeah, so when did she die? Yeah, yeah. yeah what's yeah. listed as? There was also, um, was that Wooden? Uh, I can't what? remember the name of the catalogue this one was taken out of. It was a very glossy 1980s catalogue. It was also so. a special, a big sport so. so number seven on there is Cherry Wine. That's one, I don't know if people have never heard of that one. So, um, <laughs> for reasons they're going out. We've got Sweet Content. Mystical Delight. Mystical Delight. Mystical Delight. Yeah, number 10 is Pontiac. Number 11 is Bidden and Blaze. And number 12 is Kimono. So, so they're, they're ones that you've all heard of. Um, or most of them. And I've, I've not heard of any of those ones, so it shows how many there are the ones, the ones that were the popular ones then. <coughs> and again, another picture, just out of interest, the sort of information that we've got in the library at, at, at Wisley, so if you needed to use that for a, a talk presentation, it's there for you. Yeah. It's quite a nice photo. Oh. 
And again, some very old historical engravings and pictures, which are quite interesting. One of, the, one of the earliest ones that we hold there, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I asked the RHS uh, uh, about a year ago if there was if they had any uh, information on uh, sort of more sort of scholarly articles on on daily on daily physiology. And mm. They didn't seem to know. There was one PhD thesis on um, sort of colour traits and how long the colours lasted for the cut flower industry, but there was nothing really on. Do you know it. who you asked? Uh, I, I can't. It, no, was, it, was, it was through the RHS yeah. sort of you know, question things. Um, is there, is there um, do you know if there's any sort of you know, you know, research going on around you know, daily physiology? I don't think in any detail the sort of thing you're talking through at the moment, but I think there's interest in it. But then I don't know whether, if, if, you, if I put you in touch with the library, whether they've got anything that's started or historically. But it's certainly worth speaking to the people in the herbarium, I think, as a starting point. I don't, see, I don't know who you spoke to initially before, but it's, some, you know, it's something that is, will be of interest to somebody there. And if they don't have anything specifically, then maybe daily societies abroad and contacts abroad will have it. So definitely, so if I can take your email address before we go, we can certainly look into it if there's anything available for you. So. Any other questions about any of that? You all look a bit shell shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I say, do. You always look like this. <laughs> it's lunch, isn't it? So. Okay, so I've got one more thing to do. And I, is everybody aware of, um, and this is just a bit of fun, um, Rudyard Kipling's poem, If? I'm sure you all know. So this is it's little known, a little known variety of it. It's If, the daily immersion. Okay, so I'd just like to read this out to you. And this kind of, to me, summarises people that the nutters, as you call us, them, um, are, are about. So if you can keep your head when all about you are, using, are losing theirs to catalogues, online sales and flu, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you that yes, you do need another 25 varieties too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting for the tuber that's on heat to put out shoots, or being hated, don't give way to hating, just head into the garden with your boots. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, even if that new tuber is your only aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two varieties just the same, if you can bear to see that class you've entered, one by someone else with better flowers, and watch the tuber you gave your life to frozen and sigh and plan your new stock, which will take hours. If you can make one tray of all your cuttings and then take two more trays, well, just in case, and lose half and start again at the beginning and never breathe a word about your loss, if you can force your cuttings into flower and make sure all the slugs and bugs are gone and so produce the perfect vase of winners which makes the judges all agree they've won. If you can talk about balls and keep your virtue or win best in show nor lose the common touch, if neither gall or spider mite can stop you, if all varieties count but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of daily of fun, then yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be an MDS member, my son. <laughs> so. Thank you.